Hello and welcome back and we're continuing our look at QNAP's mobile phone applications. Today we're going to talk about photos. We're going to talk about the QPhoto application from QNAP. We're going to make our way into here. We're going to make sure we're still recording there in the side and we're going to look at this app. Now first and foremost straight off the bat you may notice at the top right of the screen and I've mentioned it at the top of every video but it's worth highlighting again I have disabled the internet for this phone because of notifications, pop-ups, emails and more. So we are utilizing just the network, no internet. Don't get me wrong, the sort of files you'll be dealing with are quite small. We will be doing a speed test video with regards to Wi-Fi versus LAN very, very soon. But for now, we are looking at the mobile phone app. So if there are any internet issues, I will highlight those throughout the video. Next, it's worth mentioning the QPhoto application. QPhoto is available from both Android and iOS completely for free. And in order to find your NAS, once you've got the app installed uh, from your respective app provider, head down to Add NAS. And from here, you can just simply click where it says Add, find the NAS, stick in your login credentials there, and the NAS will appear right here. So, put that there. Still recording. Sorry, I just thought that was on the screen. Probably get rid of that at some point. Pop that down there because it's super annoying. So from here, carry on, and we log into our NAS. Now, for those that have been following my channel for a while, or people that have just owned a QNAP NAS for a great deal of time, you'll know that they released a fantastic application for um, cataloging and searching for your photos, known as QMagi, or QMagi, depending on how you pronounce it. And it is a great photo tagging application. There still doesn't appear to be a mobile app for that readily available yet, and the only QNAP photo application that I could see is Q. Photo. So it'll be interesting to see if any of those features and functionality are ported over and migrated between them. This is the first time I'm coming back to this app in quite a while. Now, from here, we can look at individual photos and file folders on the NAS. So if we click the photo folder, this is the shared album, and this lists all the photos that are currently on the NAS. It has scanned them all and has made all of these photos readily accessible to us. Not the most convenient, it's worth highlighting because a lot of you are going to want to be able to look at a lot of these photos in a greater detail and to be able to search them in a better way. So let's have a look at some of the features of this app. Well, first and foremost, you may notice on the bottom right of the screen, we have got both a video and camera application. This allows us to directly upload a picture taken live onto this device. So I'm in a soundproof room right now. Let's get a photo of me and upload it live to the NAS. So we'll click the photo app. We will, you, we will say that it's going to upload it to the multimedia folder of this NAS. We will reverse the camera to me here in the soundproof room. I'm going to wave. And we've taken that photo and now that photo has now automatically been uploaded to that NAS. We can do auto burst where it allows to just hold the button and take lots of photos while I move around. And all of those photos have now been made up to the NAS. And again, there's lots of features and functionality there. And as you can see, now files are being uploaded to that NAS. So from here, we want to see more about what this app can do. Now from here, we can look at the individual folders on our, on our phone and choose which of these we want to upload and scan for files and folders onto the NAS. On top of that, you can not only look at the Smart Album that we're looking at just now, but you can browse via File and Folder. And again, I've mentioned this in other videos, and I will mention it again. For me, huge deal breaker. I want to be, there's the photo there on the NAS. Um, I want to know that I can not only access my photos in a fast, streamlined, smart way, but also I want to be able to access them occasionally on a folder level. So the ability that this app gives you to choose between them is very, very important. Because of all the NAS brands I've seen, they either force you to use a smart system where they only index certain folders, or they give you a very basic smart system, but a good folder system. QNAP's the only one that gives you a good smart system and file folder control, which I always found impressive. Now from here, we can look at individual photo albums that you can upload directly to share with other users, but the smart album system's good enough. I'll stop pressing back too much. And the smart album system is where you can enable it to scan preset albums on PhotoStation. I've not set those up yet, but again, the option's there. Now Faces is quite interesting because here we are seeing that they've ported over 
the facial recognition from QMaggy into QPhoto, which again, awesomeness. So pleased they've done this. For those that follow my other videos, you'll know that originally on the uh, overview of QMaggy, I labeled some people's pictures. I didn't label everyone. I only labeled some people to show the functionality. It appears that those facial tags have been carried over to QPhoto. So there's me tagged in all of those different albums there, which is always fantastic. And that logic has continued over more and more. You can even change the view mode, of course, and there's lots of different options with regards to what you can do here with these tagged photos. Because remember, these that you're looking at here are not albums. These are individual photos from many albums that have been pulled because they feature a certain person. These photos here come from Berlin, they come from Taiwan, they come from the UK, they come from different events that I have attended. But it is just made sure that, because I'm tagged to them, it's created this Faces folder, something in 2019 I'm super pleased with. Burst mode is if we use that burst functionality from earlier that allows us to take multiple pictures just by holding the button and lets us pick between these pictures. There's the ones from earlier. And again, if we look at an individual picture, we'll go over here and we'll pick a photo. Uh, let's go for one from earlier. Let's go for the multimedia browser to, to show you that that works. And we'll go back to Taiwan and Hong Kong. We'll use this one of me here on the plane eating noodles because apparently I just have to give in to a stereotype apparently. And from here, we can look at the functionality and options present to us on this mobile app. So first and foremost, if we had DLNA streaming devices, we can send this photo to them. Next, we can view this photo in 3D mode. If we're using a 3D system here, look at that awful face. And of course, if we had Google Cardboard or a VR headset, we can then look at this via the separate lenses and look at my face or some noodles. Moving from there, we can make our way back, disabling that god awful mode on this phone and look at all the different options. Faces allows us to commit the tagging system, so it's now telling us there's a face there ready to be tagged, and we can click it, and it lets us know it's Robbie. So again, I love that they've implemented that system from QMaggy into this, and of course, map mode allows us, if we were using a device that had geo-tagging, we can then enable map mode that will allow us to tell us where in the world this picture was taken. So in the case of this photo, Unfortunately, because we've disabled the internet, it's probably not going to show us on Google Maps, unfortunately. But if, it, if I did have the internet enabled, it would have showed us that this was photo was taken in, I believe, Hong Kong. Actually, no, this is Taiwan. I do apologize. Um, so from there, we can make our way back and go carry on where we left off. So time-lapse photography, if we used a time-lapse mode, such as the one included with the app or the one from your mobile phone, they'd be readily available here. This shows us more lists about recently taken photos and recently uploaded. And of course, we can download and share files and folders and monitor how that action is done here. So for example, if we go back to the shared files and folders and we pick a, let's look at this vague picture of fruit from Germany. And from here, we can do a slideshow live, or if we want, we can share this file with someone. So say we want to share this file. We can then create a share link, which we can then look for the link icon, because all we want really is that link. And from here, we can choose which mobile method we want to send it to individual users. Or we can share, uh, say to download folder automatically, or use our email folder, uh, our email application on our mobile phone to email this photo to anyone we want. And of course, if we click detail, we can find out loads of information. We've got basic information, such as resolution, size, when it was taken and more. Or if you want to be more intricate, intricate, it will tell us the device that took it, a Nexus 5X mobile phone, the aperture, the white balance, everything. All of that in this mobile phone app. Some real good features and functionality there. Now, if we go back to the bottom here, we'll start wrapping things up. Background task allows us for files that we're uploading or downloading to be monitored remotely. And of course, if we go to the bottom, we can go to the settings option, which has got all those great configuration choices for this application and how it handles those photos. So at the top there, the ability to synchronize with the QNAP online application or application, the QNAP ID, thanks to my QNAP cloud, allows you 
to access this NAS anywhere in the world over the internet. And that goes for this app too. So rather than using the network, you can log in with your online system, the QNAP ID, and access all of your files anywhere over the internet, anywhere in the world. If you want, you can limit the amount of space used on your device to make sure it doesn't get out of hand if you're using live synchronization. And you can choose how you want to browse the files and photos. You can do everything from changing if it loads directly into 360 or VR, as well as the size of those thumbnails or whether you want to hold them at all. You can choose whether you only want to access these files and folders over the Wi-Fi during downloads, so you can still access the files and photos, but if you download and you don't have Wi-Fi on and you're worried about these big files, you can limit the app from doing anything in the background. On top of that, you can add music if you want, as well as edit the music that already lives within the application during those, um, what are they called? Uh, I forgot what the word is when you click play. And can you believe the words totally escaped me? When you want to do the slideshow, there we are. And of course, if you want to synchronize with another NAS, that is also open to you as well. You can synchronize multiple NASs together to have all of your collections shared between them, between you and other users. But I'm going to wrap things up here. This has been the Q Photo application and, of course, its extension into Q Maggie for mobile phones in 2019. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. I hope you found this useful, particularly if it helped you choose the right NAS brand for you because we will be looking at all the NAS brands in the coming weeks. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time and I'll see you on the next video.